with Bernie Sanders. I mean, I mentioned this on the program yesterday. Uh, Bernie had really big numbers in this um, rally in, in Madison, Wisconsin, which um, the the idea that it is sort of a a, a liberal bastion uh, phenomena is sort of belied by the fact that he had really uh, you know five thousand people out at a, a rally in uh, in Colorado. Um, you know, good stuff for yep. uh, for progress. No, that's huge. I mean, he's had some huge, you know, and the numbers that came out in the poll uh, that just came out. I'm trying to think. It was a Gallup. It might have been yep. Quinnipiac in Iowa. Quinnipiac. He was down. I think was Quinnipiac. He was down fifty one thirty three. Which is, I mean, that's an, I mean, for him to be at thirty three percent. You know, people have to remember who turns out in Iowa too, which is it is the strongest of the strongest, right? I mean, you look at a primary. Primaries have have what you usually you call the base, right? The strongest supporters. But um, we're talking, you know, caucuses. Tend, I mean, those are people willing to go out at night and stand around for a couple hours and argue with people and you know do the, do what you need to do in a caucus. And uh, those are people even more committed. So uh, you, you can't look at this objectively and say that this is bad news for Bernie Sanders. Oh no, no, it's not bad news at all. I mean, in uh, yesterday we had talked about the where um, Obama was at this time, and uh, things were a little bit tighter, but there was a much bigger, uh, just as big a swing in terms of in terms of uh, the uh, poll breakdown. Uh, in uh, 2007, I guess it was, uh, 2007, early 2008. So, um, Well, I just think there were some people that, you know, said um, Clinton was inevitable. Um, and I'm not still saying she's not going to be the nominee. She still has a huge favorite yeah, to course. be the nominee. But, uh, you know, I went through that. I remember on your show, we did. And I started going through, you know, Muskie and, and when Paul Songus was going to be the nominee. I mean, the Republican Party tends to be a little more pr- predictive. But there was a while when John McCain almost lost it in, in 2008. There's a while when George W. Bush almost lost it in 2000 when he was supposed to get it. it it's, 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 the fact is, is that you don't know. Right. Um, and and things can happen, and so you you know you have to actually wait until this stuff shakes out and see what kind of campaigns people run and what they're saying. Um, so I think you know it's it's definitely done some damage to the inevitability of Hillary, and and that'll you know that'll make her better. It's going to make what O'Malley does interesting. Webb is now in. Well, yeah, I want to talk about Webb in a second, and but I'm glad you brought up O'Malley because um, uh, Martin O'Malley had what I think is the uh, smartest line of attack against uh, Bernie Sanders, or at least to the extent, you know, within the Democratic primary anyways. I mean, we heard Claire McCaskill came out, I guess it was last week, and that was awesome. criticized that was uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, and we never got a chance to talk about this last week. Because he sucks for the fact that he has big crowds. Well, no, well, no, like no. To have Do you like remember two people in a room? You know, we didn't well, have that's a chance. What she said, she said, you know, Pat Buchanan and Ron Paul. It's always the extremists that get the big crowd. Well, no, wait a second. Let me out. Let me. Uh, when she was on, I can't remember what Morning Joe. I don't know if you heard this clip. Oh, maybe we not. meant to talk about this last week. Now it all's coming back to me. But um, you were on vacation. I have too much respect for my brain cells to watch Morning Joe, so I only find these things out if I read it somewhere else. Claire McCaskill went on and said, like, I think he's getting a free pass from the press because they're not mentioning the fact that he's a socialist. And then she said uh, uh, he's just too liberal to win in the general. And she was asked, well, what do you mean by that? And he goes, well, what, what positions does he have that's too liberal? She said expansion of Social Security, okay, desire for single, single payer uh, health care. Majority support that. Against trade. She was talking specifically to people. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I can't even remember what the last one was. Maybe uh, doesn't like to kill puppies. I mean, I don't know what is, uh, you know, which, which I thought was. You've, you've got to kill puppies to get, well, at least in the Republican. And, or in a Republican nomination, if they happen to fall off of a motorcycle, you have to leave them by the side of the road and not give them health care. The crowd will cheer. Well, or if my, they're gay puppies that are in the military, you boo them. Right. But my, so my, just, my just, point is, yeah. is that I, I don't know, you know, when she ticks off these um, these proposals, she's ticking off some of the most popular positions that any politician can hold. She, in the I country. mean, look, it's Claire McCaskill. 
buys into Washington, you know, speak and, and thought, which is this sort of faux centrism of being what they what is called economically conservative, which means nothing anymore. You know, being first of all, you have to separate economically and fiscally. Being a fiscal conservative meant balancing budgets. That's what Republicans used to be, and that meant they would raise taxes as much as they would as they would cut spending. They would do what it took to balance the books. That has no relation to today. Now it's corporatism, you know, hiding it as as fiscal conservatism, meaning that you you know you have to be pro corporate and everything, trade. Uh, you, you know, you, you you have to sort of either be neutral or sort of kind of anti unions. You definitely have to hate teachers unions. Um, and these kinds of things, and, and of course, that that's just a made-up bunch of garbage by by certain people in Washington, because as you just pointed out, all the things you just mentioned, some of them are things I've happened to work on on, on issues like Social Security, and I've seen the polls, and they tend to be somewhere. Literally, I remember one point seeing that seventy something percent of people in the yeah. Tea Party didn't didn't want their their Social Security to be cut. A majority of actual all-around Republicans want it to go up, and the yeah. Democratic thing is so. I mean, that's just stupidity. I mean, well, you know, but let me ask you this: things. I mean, l- l- from a political standpoint, right? I mean, you've worked on political campaigns. Do you think? I mean, Claire McCaskill's going out there as a surrogate of Hillary Clinton. I mean, do you think that? I mean, well, first off, I mean, I think we get we get a sense of like we haven't heard much of Claire McCaskill since then. I think in that respect, but I mean. What, what is she thinking? Into, I, mean, I, get, I get the fact that she's in a bubble, but where, how does she think that's going to help criticizing Bernie Sanders in that way? If I were the Clinton people, I'd be careful who I let go out there and speak for me yeah. because, you know, you need to remember, Claire McCaskill has been making all sorts of signs of, you know, talking about, you know, I don't know if she's come around and said it, but she's been sort of hinting she wants to run for governor, which is what she did and she lost before she ended up winning ultimately and becoming a senator. So she's had those ambitions before. She seems to have them again. And she thinks, unlike Sherrod Brown and Tom Harkin and others who realize, you know, Russ Feingold, Al Franken, he went in the heartland by running as a populist. She still, you know, applies the model of we win running as a centrist, which has been proven again and again to not be accurate. Sure, if you can spend all of your own money like John Warner, it helps. Or if you have a name, a very, very famous name like Evan Bayh, based upon your, the fact that your dad was a hugely popular and quite progressive senator, yeah, those are things that will help you out. But they weren't winning on their, their centrism. Right. They are winning on what they, the other things they had going for them. And somehow she's learned the, long, the wrong lessons. And so I'd be careful having her speak. Uh, that's me. what I, I was just, saying. I, I actually, my, my guess is that um, the Clinton people were not happy with that and that, you know, she's a senator. It's not like, you know, you're sending out Lanny Davis. 